Every 4.6 seconds, somebody in Britain receives a parking ticket. Not good. Last year, councils issued more tickets than ever before. We didn't issue a ticket, mate. But it's not really fair for only two minutes. Parking fines now raise hundreds of millions of pounds in revenue. They care about the money. Show me the money. They're too fond of pining drivers. They're like vermin. Now, the motorists of Britain are fighting back. Stop! Stop! 60 quid, mate! If I'm right, I'll fight. So why have life's at stake? Because I'm a pensioner and I can't afford 70 quid. All right, well, this, 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 now, 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 yeah, all right. It's a battle between citizen and state. It seems like it's just a parking ticket. But it's not. It's not. But I think this country does need a revolution. So is this about parking or about something bigger about society? Um, no, this is about parking. Councils enforce parking restrictions to ensure road safety and the smooth flow of traffic along our streets. But there is a gang of masked riders who believe some councils are overstepping the boundaries by using parking enforcement to make money out of motorists. We've all got our own names. We've got um, uh, S&M, uh, me, I'm the Bald Eagle, um, Steve, we've got Monkey Girl, she's not here today. S&M and um, Parking Warrior are going to be coming back uh, very shortly. They're going to take us down to another car. Hold on. Car, who's ready to go? It's basically a mob of people that have got a single idea, which is we're fed up with being treated as cash cows. We hold councils to account. Bald Eagle, Bald Eagle, this is Coco, are you receiving over? Today, the No Two mob are in South London, tailing a CCTV camera car. Coco, Coco, can confirm we have lost the car. We're following the car, we're just coming up to a set of traffic lights now. They follow the cars along the highways of Britain, warning motorists they're being watched. Brilliant, well done. We started to follow them around to see what their habits were. What we found was that they returned time and again to the same venues, and we call those venues honeypots. The mob have tailed this car to Southwark. It's parked outside a Tesco Express. In our experience, the cars aren't very visible. And that's what we do. We go out and we make them visible by standing and holding out signs and pointing to the car. Southwark Council say their CCTV vehicles are clearly marked and not covert. They urge motorists to read the road signs to avoid getting tickets. I totally, I totally agree with it because I just parked there to run in and get a newspaper the other day and I got a ticket and I thought the whole point of having that lay-by there was so that people could park outside Tesco. What's the point of putting it there? Well, you obviously haven't seen the signage that's there so it obviously isn't good enough. It isn't good enough. And they know it isn't good enough because they've got him there waiting to catch people unawares like yourself. Is that what they That's doing? what he's doing. That's how you got caught. That guy oh, sits so there. Deliberately? Yes. And what are you doing that's... We're just warning people and, yeah, and well, stopping well, people parking in that bay yeah. for the couple of hours that they're not allowed to so they don't end up with what these tickets. It's disgraceful. What is the point of it? Well? Yeah, so the, the point of it is purely about making money out of motorists. It's absolutely all it's about. Such a rip -off, so well done. Thank well you very done. much. There you go. This bloke's just giving us a thumbs up. I like what these guys are doing and they need to be all over the place. I will be there to support them, yeah? Well done, mate. Well done. And you. Andrew, thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. See ya. We know the scale of the industry and the, the fact that they use the word industry is what really concerns us. I've long maintained that an industry should have a product. And the only product of this particular industry is human misery. Faced with paying out a record-breaking £700 million in penalties to local councils, we now contest our tickets in unprecedented numbers. Motorists appeal first to the council, 
But if they're unsuccessful, case reference D. they can take the case to a dedicated parking tribunal. Let me introduce myself. My name's Caroline Shepherd, and I'm the adjudicator who'll deal with your case. I'm completely independent of the council and of yourself. Caroline Shepherd is the Traffic Penalty Tribunal's chief adjudicator. The Traffic Penalty Tribunal uh, covers both England and Wales. There are about 280 local authorities all around the country that are issuing parking tickets and penalty charge notices. I'm afraid it's very common in traffic. <laughs> and if you get one of those and you want to appeal against it, then you can write to the Traffic Penalty Tribunal and then the adjudicator will decide whether you have to pay or not. Tribunals take place in hundreds of towns and villages across England and Wales. Les Powell was given a ticket for parking on a single yellow line outside his bank in Cradley. I'm not one to back away if I'm in the right. Les has a disabled badge. It allows him to park on single yellow lines. He received a ticket after the traffic warden maintained his blue badge was not on display. That blue badge was in my car and it was on show. And there's no sympathy whatsoever from these wardens. And they think they are the Gestapo, Hitler's, a lot of them. They, because they've got their uniform on, they've got power. Do you, how, how much was your fine, how much? 70 pounds. But, uh, well, I haven't paid it and I shouldn't pay it. I'll, I'll, I'll go to jail for it. Do you really mean that? Oh, yeah. Really? Well, I'll go to jail because I'm innocent. And that's it. I'm innocent. Today, Les will attend the tribunal to argue his case. If they want to take me to jail from the tribunal, I'll go. If I'm right, I'll fight. Good morning, Sandwell Parking Services. Can I help you? Les will be up against Sandwell Council's head of parking, Kira Flack. British people are very good and they like to abide by the rules and it's only a small minority that doesn't confine and they are the ones we really need to educate. If I go there today, don't call me a lawyer because I should be telling the truth. My father always told me, tell the truth and nobody can hurt you. Now, of course, we have people who are not entirely truthful, but that may apply on both sides. We treat everybody equally. Motorists must gather their own evidence to prove their case against the council. Typically, photographs are very helpful. People just really need to say what happened, and the adjudicator will then see whether that fits within the law or not. I'll need your name, I'm afraid. It sounds like A-O-U. Okay. The council have brought along the civil enforcement officer who issued Les with the so, ticket. Ms. Alec, you issued the penalty charge notice. Now, would you like to tell us why you issued it? The car was parked in the single yellow line on the high street in Crady, and I did not see no blue badge. She says uh, she, she didn't see the blue badge. Okay, oh. well, I'll deal with that in a minute. I'll give you a full chance to deal with that in a moment, but um, she says she didn't see it uh, at this stage, and then it's your turn, all right? Okay? So, yes. Then he became very rude and started shouting at me and saying that I wasn't doing my job properly. She was standing in front of the car, and I walked up and I said, what's the problem? She says, you parked illegally. I says, have you seen this? And I, she came round to the side of the car and I pointed to the windscreen and the blue badge was on the dashboard. Is that correct? Is that correct? I'm asking you. No, 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 wait, no, please. Um, right. Now, he, Mr. Powell says it was on the dashboard. Wasn't. Right. Have we got a just, fo any photographs? Just, we, did just did a minute, shepherd, just a minute. Yeah. First of all, is well, that correct what I've just said? All right, now, uh, let, me, let me just try and uh, take this one step at a time. 
Uh, because that, I'm a pensioner and I can't afford 73. All right, well, let's, now, let's, now, let's now, 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 there could easily be a blue badge behind, or about near the taxes, could there not? I'm not going to take this any further, and I'll tell you why, because I think the photographs simply do not show that there was no blue badge there. And so I'm allowing your appeal, and there's no question of you paying anything, Mr Powell. Thank you. I got justice, and uh, I'm 70 quid better off. <laughs> it's not a battle of winning or losing, it's about getting the processes right. We should be doing the job fairly, equitably, and be fair to the customer. You call people customers. Are they, re are they customers or are they citizens? I mean, this is a they're, local they're, authority. They're both. They're citizens and customers. When they go to a car park, and they buy a pay and display ticket, or they park on street and buy a pay and display ticket. They are our customers, and we, they, they have expectations as a customer what we should be providing them with and how we should be dealing with them. Like and a business that, relationship? Yeah. Kira Flack is in charge of Sanwell Council's traffic wardens. Chris Clark has been patrolling these streets for three years. Get laughter. You get the cars driving past and trying to land the splash of a big puddle straight at you. <laughs> yeah, I've had that as well. Hello. Hello. You're right. No, you have to move it on, unfortunately, please. Honestly, mate, you have to move it on from here straight away. Thank you. It's not in perspective at all. I've been spat out, I've, you know, people wish harm on my children, wish harm on my family and all that kind of thing. Threats to kill, you know, you can get, get threatened to kill most days. Get the car parked before you arrive, over. It's your car, sir. Yeah, unfortunately it's been issued with a PCN, sir. So you been issued a ticket, mate. Yeah. The yellow lines right underneath your car. Yeah, right, okay. Say that again, sorry. I'm loading, I'm loading it yesterday, right, yeah? Obviously, you've got loading right. bays and the bays across there, but yeah, on double yellow lines. I loading bays yesterday, I put a on my car yesterday, right? Okay. Yeah. All your details yeah, on sure, the back, yeah. okay, I understand that. All your details on the back of the PCN. Mm -hmm. You can appeal the ticket and explain if you were loading or loading. Okay. He's racist. The only pin for Asian people, the only particular Asian people's cars. You know what I mean? It's the second time he's done it now. Second time. So it's not about pulling socks, so it's not about... You know what I mean? They're racist people, you're Asian, you're racist to Asians. You know what I mean? What's, when the Asians come together, what do Asians do to them? They'll ram you up. If you read signs, you wouldn't get parking tickets. There's enough of them about, and there's a car park up there. How does the parking warden know who's got out of the car that's parked? He don't. We are the baddies, and it's just an opportunity to uh, vent off an anger and abuse at someone, I think. My name is David Binns. Yes. I'd like Thank to make you. it clear I'm yes. independent from the council. The Traffic Penalty Tribunal employs a team of 23 legally trained adjudicators. My name is Nichols. I'm the adjudicator appointed by the Traffic Penalty Tribunal. My name is Maggie Kennedy. I'm your parking adjudicator today. They handle over 20,000 cases every year, by post, over the phone, and in person. I do parking appeals all over England and Wales. Today I happen to be almost in Brighton. All you need to know about me really is that I'm an independent lawyer. I don't work for the council. I'm not on the council's side, if you see what I mean. Yeah. All right? Not on your side either. But I have had a good look at this. Right. And you've got this like a dog with a sausage, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, we're judicial pond life, really. Uh, we, you know, we, we don't rank at all on, on the scale of things. Oh, that's all right. I've no great ambitions. I don't need to wear a wig. It's too hot. Now, it's quite an interesting one, which doesn't interest you, but it interests me. <laughs> Now, unfortunately, I've been to the council's website and they don't have any photographic evidence available. I don't know whether that's a very conveniently 
for all that. Don't get into conspiracies. Mm. No. You know, people tell the most outrageous stories sometimes. You know, and the dog was sick, and then the trolley wheel, and then the bottom fell out of the bag, and then the four-year-old needed to go to the toilet, and all of these things happen, you know. And sometimes they're telling the truth from their heart. I thought that the traffic warden had been just really... Uh, it was just not a very nice thing to do. I, mean, I think everything's gone mad, really. I feel justified that we arrived there, we were invited to park, there was that over there. I, I wouldn't stress too much that we were short of time because we had ten minutes to spare and the theatre's only a cop stride from where we were. We just completely cover, you know, the society from top to bottom, left to right, side by side. You know, all human life is there. Thank you, Matt. I won't shake no, hands no, if you don't right. mind. Yes, but no. I need to remain impartial and yes, of course I, I am. Yes, I do understand. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Lewis. Good day. It's about the people, it's about the real stories, and just getting to talk to people and them looking at me and saying, look, you know, this isn't fair. I did not expect in the middle of the night that these wardens come round at seven o'clock in the morning. I couldn't believe it. What you're really complaining about is being caught, isn't it? In 25 years as a criminal prosecutor, I met some very polite murderers and burglars who were never in the least bit upset that they were being prosecuted. Uh, but I prosecuted hundreds of careless drivers who were deeply offended, mortally offended, by the, the, the suggestion that they were driving badly. And penalty charge notice recipients tend to be along much the same lines. The law is a very blunt weapon sometimes. And with the vehicle there, which is you've accepted and is shown in the photographs, yeah. on the zigzag lines, the contravention happens. I have to conclude as a matter of law, the penalty charge is properly issued and technically you do owe the penalty. All that decision is final, there's no further rights of appeal, unless you want to go to the High Court in London and argue the well, law with the judges. I feel that strongly. Well. Very few people do that, yeah. uh, usually because of the expense involved. Yeah. On the whole, if you look Most at our statistics, more appeals are allowed than dismissed, but there are provisions to go to the High Court, just like any legal proceedings, they can be judicially reviewed in the High Court, and this happened about three times, but it's not really um, uh, an option that most people want to consider. Richard Shawmerton runs a building company in North London. He is preparing to take his local council to the High Court. They care about money, that's all they care about. Show me the money! His fleet of 25 vehicles has received almost a thousand parking tickets. I can have so much shite in here. These are all my ongoing tickets in Camden. This is one location. Is there a system? There will be soon. I mean, you know, I'm a builder. I'm not a, I'm not a Mrs. Moneypenny. Richard contests nearly every ticket he receives. If the boys park on a bus stop or on a red route, yeah, they get paid, but I never pay tickets, I just about never pay tickets because there's always a reason for me parking on a double yellow line or single yellow line, which is usually unloading or unloading. The local authorities should realise they should leave the building industry alone and realise that we can't do our job without vehicles. We have to deliver, we have to pick up rubbish. By law, Richard's vans are allowed to park on double yellows for a limited time to load and unload. But he argues that despite this, councils still issue him with tickets. Oh, it's mental. There's probably £80,000 worth of fines there. They tried to make us pay, and they probably had 2,000 quid off us if they're lucky. And that can't be right. I think some of these bureaucrats are nothing better than maggots. But at the end of the day, I'm stopping Camden stealing money off me, because that's how I see it. It's, it's like legalised mugging. Camden councils say they're improving the way they issue tickets and deny that parking is run to generate revenue. Today, Richard is making another appearance at tribunal to contest his latest batch of tickets. I'm late. I've got to go in. A little bit late. Yeah, I've got to go in because I'm late. How many I'm tickets? Four. Good it's luck. an absolute liberty of my time to take. This will be Richard's 57th visit to tribunal. 
he almost never loses. County Council were trying to get 1,040 quid off me. Dirty bastards. And they didn't get one penny of that. Dirty bastards for wasting my time. To try and put an end to the endless cycle of parking fines and tribunal appearances, Richard has decided to try and settle the issue once and for all. And that's why I'm going to judicially review them and put all my evidence in front of a High Court judge and we're going to see what divisive bullshit they come out with because I know this much, a High Court judge won't accept their bullshit. They picked a fight with the wrong guy, I tell you. And I don't go away. I do not go away and I will not lie down and I always win. Brandon, here I come. Across the country, motorists are taking a stand. Barry Moss lives in Bolton and is one of Britain's most highly profile parking campaigners. Parking virtually took over my life, you know, with, with everything. You don't wake up one morning and think, hey, today I'm going to be a parking campaigner. It just, events completely overtake you. And you just get involved with the issue of the day. After successfully contesting a series of parking tickets at tribunal, Barry became convinced that Bolton Council were issuing tickets unlawfully. I like things to be right. This is why we have the problems in Britain, is because we don't complain enough. In 2010, Barry went all the way to the High Court to try to prove that Bolton Council had money taken from unlawful parking tickets in their accounts. If there's an injustice been carried out by a council or any other organisation, and, and that's where we can, only, we can get redressed, then that's where we have to go. Is it not a little bit absurd to take parking tickets to the High Court? No. No. Where am I going here? Barry has dedicated his life to exposing the failings and loopholes of parking restrictions. He does this by getting tickets deliberately. Yeah, like here, we've got one here, see? Well, this he's had a repair here in the road. I could park here all day. And you're not doing anything illegal. But you still know you're parking on a double yellow line, don't you? It's a, it's a it doesn't matter. They know, they know that it wants repairing. <laughs> There's a civil enforcement officer here, I wonder. I mean, what's this here? The tickets give Barry the opportunity to challenge the council at tribunal. The line here is completely missing. Should be a line there, a line there, and a T-bar here. How can people comply with the parking place's order if there's no lines? Barry refuses to buy pay and display tickets if he believes the council haven't painted the lines correctly. In comparison to the other street, this is how they should be. Well, I mean, it's still illegal because they, they should have a double, there should be a double white line down there, similar to this one here, which denotes the end of the bay. But everyone knows that's a parking place. So what's the, what's the difference? Why does it matter? Because they're not, they're just, it's, it's like me and you, then. Oh, we'll go make our own parking bay up, eh? Get a bit of yellow paint, stick a couple of lines down, and that's it, you know? That's basically what the council's done. Instead of, instead of looking at the book and saying, oh, this is what you should... These guys on seven, eight hundred pound a week, who's in charge of these things? And they should know what a bay looks like. Why does it bother you, though, that the, that the council would do this? Because they expect us to comply with all the laws, the parking, and they're not doing it themselves. So it's a two-way street. Uh, I'm just going to check, see if I've got a ticket. Ah, we've got one. Mm. 
Success. Go to appeal with that, I know. Have you seen both? Yeah. Oh, I'm awful. No, it's all right, love. I got it on purpose. Are you disabled or...? But what I'm trying to do is I like the fact that they've not painted the lines. They've been like this for years. And they should be, they should be nice and bright. I'm taking a, a, a picture of these non-existent lines. <laughs> if everybody appealed, the system would go into meltdown. Is that what you'd want? That's what I'd want, yeah. For everybody to challenge their penalty charge notice. If everybody said tomorrow, if you've only got a parking ticket from now, appealed, it would go, the, the system would completely go into meltdown overnight. Because there's only three in a thousand appeal. Imagine if everybody appealed. In the last year, the number of wardens patrolling our streets has declined, but tickets issued are still on the increase. Motorists are already at the mercy of new technologies and now have to contend with the latest in mobile surveillance, the CCTV camera car. Southend on Sea Council have recently purchased two. It's diabolical. They're killing our trade. It forces our customers to shop elsewhere because they will not shop down this area with this car floating around. I've personally been targeted um, and had a fine for 30 odd pound. The customer can't park in the mornings from 7.30 till 9.30. If they do, the camera car comes along, sits behind them and books them. It doesn't let you know you've been, you've been tagged. That's spying. The only time you'll know you've been tagged with that car is when that letter hits the doormat and then you feel abused, don't you? If it's a traffic warden, the traffic warden gives time for the customer to come back out of the shop and move the vehicle. The camera car does not give that time. They pull up straight behind and book them. And people do just quickly think, oh, I'm just going to go to the bank. I'll quickly just draw some money out of the cash point. It's undercover. It's clandestine, isn't it? I think it's disgusting. That's just savage. That's nasty, isn't it? It's so why have life's at stake. Bob has run his own independent print shop for the last 15 years. I guess people around the town are pissed off. It's Big Brother. It's, it's not the right way for the council to be behaving. They're terrorising the people of the town. They're affecting people's daily lives, they're affecting local businesses, yeah? And I've stood up and just said, no, enough is enough. I made up uh, an agenda. Thank you. This is a mixture of last week's action points, and I've put some extra points in. Bob, along with other concerned members of the local community, has decided to form an action group against the use of the camera car. Right now, we need to get them to sit up and pay attention to what's being said. Because at the moment, all they're, all they're doing, they're just proving that we don't live in a democracy. The spy car, really, is the, it's the, it's, it's the straw that's broken the camel's back. It's pushed everything over the edge, and the council are getting away with too much for too long. Um, but, the, but the first thing on here is, we followed up from last week was a group name. And I thought of two. Uh, one, Preserve South End, and the other, Welcome to South End. I rather like SOS Spy Cars. SOS Spy Cars. What, what, so have you got any, any name that you think is well, appropriate? Well, I had um, a number, Fre the Friendlier Parking Club or the Common Sense Parking Club, the Vashnal Parking Club, which perhaps is a bit uh, too past, really. If we talk about so the spy car... So we don't like no. Preserve South End, then, to preserve our town? Too long. It's a really it's short, uh, snappy and not memorable. We need to... Right, OK, we so have we agreed on the name, then? SOS Spy Cars. Right, OK. Right, OK. Point four, agreement was reached to develop the 1984 theme for the spy car. Action was made to develop a poster. I didn't email it to you, but I have come up with, I have enhanced the idea a little bit.
It's very eye-catching. <laughs> should it be was this the future or is this the future? Well, we're <laughs> that's the whole twist, to, isn't we're it? to change it, aren't uh, we? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, George Orwell said in the 40s that 1984 was the future. Actually, it's about 30 years later than he predicted. So, therefore, it's yeah. 19, was it the future? Yeah. No, I'm not nitpicking, don't get me wrong, but is Big Brother watching you? It should be capital B for brother and the question mark at the end. Yeah. But, I mean, it's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, brilliant. Yes. But yes, you're right. That is a question mark. And and it should be big, big brother, yeah. But yeah. I mean, I think it's brilliant. I'm not nitpicking. I'm just but other than yeah, that, very, very good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What's happening here is happening nationwide. So I, I, my own personal feeling is the objective of us as a group should be to get rid of the spy car. That simple. Mission statement completed. Bob calls in motorbike gang, the No Two Mob, to deal with the camera car. Hopefully you'll be able to provide us with the sufficient intelligence so that we can go down and properly investigate these cars and the way they're being operated. So it's, it's a two-way street. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we find, that they do, they do use the small parades of shops as their hunting ground. Oh, well, that sounds good. And the councils are just kicking the small businesses in, in the crops. I can see the problem that you've got down there, and I think you've got a, a, one of those arrogant councils that think that they know best, and uh, we will be bringing it to their attention, shall we say. Morning, or if you're within radio range, we are still on the road. They've got two cars. First thing is to locate the cars. They're both there. We're just around the corner from you, I believe. It's Needle in the Hastings. Where's he going? Is it like a game? Uh, it's more chess. Morning, really. Eagle. Morning, Eagle. We have a car. Yeah, they are right in front of us. Right on the seafront. You've just got to outwit them, that's all. When you do find it, it's a huge buzz. It's a huge buzz. You've got it. Because once you've got it, now you're going to make them do proper enforcement. Not hide from the general public and find them. You're going to be able to tell the public, listen, you're not going to hide now. We're going to tell the public where you are, and that's what your job's supposed to be. There are strict guidelines laid down by the Secretary of State that govern how these cars must be used. They must only operate where it is difficult or impractical for a traffic warden to patrol on foot. These cars are not being used in that way. They're being deployed willy-nilly. This is statutory guidance. You, you must comply with it, and they're not. They're not. They're just sending the cars out where it's equally practical for a CEO to go. At the moment, the vast majority of councils are not listening to the public. And it seems that it's become all about the money and less about public service. It's not just mobile cameras that are catching motorists. Bus lane cameras are the fastest growing method of enforcement in the UK. Since last year, the number of tickets issued for driving in them has shot up to over half a million. Brighton and Hove City Council use cameras to monitor their bus lanes. The aim is to keep them free of traffic in a city that wants to promote the use of public transport. Andy Capey was caught and given a £60 penalty. There's some little guy in his office up there with the camera and so, oh, there's one! And start controlling the CCTV, you know, with his joysticks, I guess he has. So yeah, it's down to one individual up there, you know, by chance, seeing me in, in the wrong place at the wrong time. Get him, gotta get him. Today is Andy's tribunal hearing. His defence is that the sign warning him not to turn into the bus lane was not visible at the time. You'll see on my photograph it is not in this position. In fact, this was kind of like at that angle. And you'll see it. I mean, I've got it on my phone. There we go. One full colour, glossy finish photograph. <coughs> the evidence that will result in me getting the, uh, the penalty cancelled. Fingers crossed. 
what I object to is um, you are considered to be guilty until proven innocent. Well, I think most people will get the letter saying you are fined £30, we've got evidence that you've gone into this bus lane. If you don't pay within two weeks or appeal, then it goes up to 60 they'll go, I'll pay the £30. And, and, uh, and that's what the, the schemes encourage. They encourage people to admit to something even if they're not in the wrong um, because they, they have the threat of the fine doubling within quite a short space of time. Present we have Mr Andy Cappy. Uh, the, from Brighton Hove City Council we have Mr Ian Worrell. Uh, would you like to then tell me wh what, what challenge you make to this? Okay, well, the one photograph that I want, that I've printed off, so you get a much better view, is this yes. one. And basically in that photograph it shows this no right hand turn sign. You, um, you make the point clearly. Mm. Mr Worrell, how do you respond to, to that? That does rather challenge the council's evidence of adequate signage on this particular occasion. Yeah. I accept, actually, that from the photographs that you've sent in, that the no right turn sign isn't the, isn't the correct way, correct way round. Uh, so, yeah, I, I totally accept what you're saying there. And, right. Um, I think we find, I, I, I'm satisfied, that on this particular day the signage was defective because it was not in the right position and visible. And therefore, you get the benefit of that doubt, I will find this contravention did not happen and I will cancel or instruct the council to cancel this penalty charge notice. Okay, good. Thanks. Right. right, and just before we end, is there any potential for claiming expenses for you this? You can claim, but you won't get them. The regulations under which we operate specify that that power will only be very rarely exercised. Yes. So the, the time it's taken to appeal this and the... Time, you know, time is what it is, I'm afraid. It's, um, so there's no recompense for that at all? No. This could have been very easily present, prevented, and I think that's a shame because it has taken a lot, up a lot of my time yeah. to, to, to do I, this. I, you're not alone in this. No, I know. But um, the flexibility and discretion I have is quite limited mm. by the, no, no, by no, the no, government no. regulations, you're, I'm you're afraid, control, and yeah. I, have to, I have to apply those first and foremost, and that's what I, that's what I do. Okay. All right, thank you thank very you much, then. Anyway. Thank you. This year, bus lane cameras netted Brighton and Hove City Council over half a million pounds. I do believe it should be enforced. Before we had them, uh, the bus lanes were completely clogged with vehicles that shouldn't be there, and buses didn't run on time. And we know yeah, it is proven that they do work. Uh, we still get vehicles in the bus lanes, 30 to 40 a day on a normal shift, um, but that's way less than it used to be. So we know it's effective, and we know that the buses run you know, on time. <laughs> A new bus lane in Medway, Kent, has caught the attention of the No-2 mob. Motorists, oblivious to the signs, are driving into the bus lane from two entry points. The fine is £60. It's going to get you if you come down that bus lane, isn't it? <laughs> Medway are giving out roughly 500 tickets a week to unfortunate motorists who are simply not seeing the signs. Bald Eagle takes the top entrance to the bus lane. Killswitch and Coco work the other end. Right, can I advise you not to turn left or right, you'll get a ticket, there's a, it's now bus lane, so you're going to have to do a U-turn, you think it's a really bad sign. It isn't clear enough, is it? It's not big enough, it's, it's not good enough, is it? No. <sighs> See? Another one. Didn't see the sign. I want Medway Council to come down here and stand with me for a little while. Just come and talk to us. That's all we want. We just want you to talk to us. The man responsible for the cameras in the bus lane is Andy McGrath. The council's position is that we would love it if we never issued another ticket in that area because that would mean nobody was driving through the bus station and that would be our preferred option. And we're still issuing, a, I guess, a significantly higher number of tickets than I would have expected. But having said that, I've visited the site many times my, myself and it, it's got 13 statutory signs explaining that you can't drive a car through there. Medway Council at the moment are burying their heads in the sand. They're saying, no, we've got the right signs. Well, yes, you have got the right signs. Problem is people aren't seeing them. That's not fair. Thank you very much.
very welcome. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Stop! Stop! Sixty quid, mate. It's cost you sixty quid. Some people don't want to get help. Oh well. Win some, and then the council wins some more. It's a pot of honey for the for the council for the enforcement authority. Hello, mate. I just want to warn you: if you go left or right ahead, you're going to get a sixty-pound fine. Did you see this orange? Uh, no, I didn't. No, I know you didn't. <laughs> In seven and a half hours, the No 2 mob managed to stop 166 motorists from using the bus lane, saving them £10,000 worth of fines. You're absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. You really, really are. You deserve, you know, every good thing that comes your way because you're, you know, for the people, as it were, you know. Absolutely. I think you're absolutely spectacular. You really, you really, really, really are. Parkex is Europe's largest parking trade show. Each year, companies come here to sell the latest technology and parking enforcement to local councils. And we're very pleased to bring to market our latest offering, which is the product of two years of R&D. So this year we're very pleased to come to Parkex and launch this product. It's a lucrative industry, worth over £1 billion. Okay, this is an example of perhaps one of the more modern kinds of parking machines. I grant you it doesn't look terribly modern, but it, it looks pretty familiar to us all. The No 2 mob intend to visit the show to gather fresh intelligence on the latest technology. We can be clandestine if we need to be, and um, we fully expect to get thrown out because we will be unveiling a little present for them, but uh, I'll keep that one um, under my hat for now. go down there and pat themselves on the back essentially and we're going to sell this to the councils the best way that we can so that we can encourage them to uh, increase their revenue. So they'll never admit it to you but we know exactly what Park X is about. Sorry, say again, say again, just pick up over. It's huge. The money that's involved and when there's a lot of money at stake then you're looking at greed pure and simple. It's a drug. They get, they're hooked on it and they can't see the damage that this is doing to the local economy. We want them to know that we're keeping an eye on them, definitely. When Barry took his case to the High Court, he became embroiled in a two-year legal battle. In the end, the judge ruled against him, and he lost. The risk is that you've got to pay the costs of not only your own barristers, but the barristers of the, the defendants. Court costs mean Barry now stands to lose everything. How much do you owe because of that case? It's, uh, it's around about £43,000 now. They are trying to get me out of my house by selling the house and putting me out on the street. We can't pay it. If they've got to sell the house to get the money, then unfortunately that's, that's the way it's got to be. But it's the, the wife who um, is very stressed out over it because of it. I built this house with my own hands, with the help of the wife.
we built it with our own hands and uh, it is now at risk. So do you, do you have any regrets? No, I have no regrets, no. None at all. So losing the house doesn't worry you? Yes, it does worry me a little, yeah. 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 Yeah, because yeah. I finally, uh, I've, I've finally got somewhere I wanted, a house with a, a south-facing rear aspect and the sheep on the field at the back, they come up and they take bread out of your fingers and it's, uh, it does worry me a little, yeah. But I can't do nothing about it. So in hindsight, would you do it again? Yes. Yes. A lot of people will question, why did I risk my house um, to go to the High Court? But uh, you don't think that it's, uh, it's going to be at risk when you do it. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. But I thought for one minute that the, I was going to lose. It wouldn't have gone anywhere near the High Court. You know. But anyone who goes to the High Court always think they're going to win. Today, Richard is taking his case to the High Court. They're not fit. They're not fit to um, you know, be allowed to run parking. I want to put them in their place. I want to put them in their place. And when a High Court judge has told them, don't do this, don't do that, then they've been told. He hopes the evidence he's gathered will be enough to convince the judge that his council are illegally using parking to raise revenue. Making these bundles up has cost a packet. Do you worry about that? The expense that you've gone to? And, and no, rest? no, because eventually I'll take this to court, I'll prove Camden Council are up to an awful lot of no good, and then they'll stop issuing all the tickets they do, and etc. Et and then. Um, I won't have to spend endless hours every week writing letters to tickets that should never have been issued in the first place. Is there risk involved going to the High Court? Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably 100 grand, 200 grand bill if it all goes wrong. Something like that. But are you confident? Yeah. Yeah, I'm well confident. <laughs> If I lose this, it's bent. The battle lines between motorist and council have been drawn, and the fight looks set to continue. There needs to be trust between the citizens in their cars and the authorities. At present, it doesn't always appear that that trust exists on either side. When it stops is when the, when the council see sense and realise that um, they can't use motorists as cash cows. They cannot use it for revenue-driven enforcement. It's against the law. It's as simple as that. Across the country, motorists are taking a stand. Barry Moss lives in Bolton and is one of Britain's most highly profile parking campaigners. Parking virtually took over my life, you know, with, with everything. You don't wake up one morning and think, hey, today I'm going to be a parking campaigner. It just, events 
completely overtake you and you just get involved with the issue of the day. After successfully contesting a series of parking tickets at Tribunal, Barry became convinced that Bolton Council were issuing tickets unlawfully. I like things to be right. This is why we have the problems in Britain, is because we don't complain enough. In 2010, Barry went all the way to the High Court to try to prove that Bolton Council had money taken from unlawful parking tickets in their accounts. If there's an injustice been carried out by a council or any other organisation, and, and that's where we can only, we can get redressed, then that's where we have to go. Is it not a little bit absurd to take parking tickets to the High Court? No. No. Where am I going here? Barry has dedicated his life to exposing the failings and loopholes of parking restrictions. He does this by getting tickets deliberately. Yeah, like here, we've got one here, see? Well, this he's had a repair here in the road. I could park here all day. And you're not doing anything illegal. But you still know you're parking on a double yellow line, don't you? It's a, it's a technical... It doesn't matter. They know, they know that it wants repairing. <laughs> There's a civil enforcement officer here, I wonder. Well, what's this here? The tickets give Barry the opportunity to challenge the council at tribunal. The line here is completely missing. Should be a line there, a line there, and a T bar here. How can people comply with the parking places order if there's no lines? Barry refuses to buy pay and display tickets if he believes the council haven't painted the line. Takes the top entrance to the bus lane. Killswitch and Coco work the other end. Right, can I advise you not to turn left or right? You'll get a ticket. There's a, it's now bus lane, so you're going to have to do a U-turn. You think it's a really bad sign? It isn't clear enough, is it? It's not big enough. It's it's not good enough, is it? No. <sighs> See, another one. Didn't see the sign. I want Medway Council to come down here and stand with me for a little while. Just come and talk to us. That's all we want. We just want you to talk to us. The man responsible for the cameras in the bus lane is Andy McGrath. The council's position is that we would love it if we never issued another ticket in that area because that would mean nobody was driving through the bus station and that would be our preferred option. And we're still issuing, a, I guess, a significantly higher number of tickets than I would have expected. But having said that, I've visited the site many times my, myself and it, it's got 13 statutory signs explaining that you can't drive a car through there. Medway Council at the moment are burying their heads in the sand. They're saying, no, we've got the right signs. Well, yes, you have got the right signs. Problem is people aren't seeing them. That's not fair. Welcome, thank you. Yeah, stop, stop. 60 quid, mate. It's cost you 60 quid. Some people don't want to get help. Oh well. Win some, and then the council wins some more. Pot of honey for the for the council for the enforcement authority. Hello, mate. I just want to warn you: if you go left or right ahead, you're going to get a sixty pound fine. Did you see this orange? Uh, no, I didn't. No, I know you didn't. <laughs> no, no. Sixty quid the council aren't going to get. Yeah. In seven and a half hours, the No Two mob managed to stop 166 motorists from using the bus lane saving them £10,000 worth of fines. You're absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. You really, really are. You deserve, you know, 
every good thing that comes your way because you're, you know, for the people, as it were, you know. Absolutely. I think you're absolutely spectacular. You Thank really, you really, really are. Parkex is Europe's largest. Wrong, but is Big Brother watching you? It should be capital B for brother and the question mark at the end. Yeah. But, I mean, it's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, brilliant. Yeah. But yes, you're right. That is a question mark. And, it and should be, be Big Brother, yeah. But yeah. I mean, I think it's brilliant. I'm not nitpicking. I'm just, but other yeah. than that... Very, very good. Yeah. 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 What's happening here is happening nationwide. So I, I, my own personal feeling is the objective of us as a group should be to get rid of the spike car. That simple. Mission statement completed. Bob calls in motorbike gang, the No 2 mob, to deal with the camera car. Hopefully you'll be able to provide us with the sufficient intelligence so that we can go down and properly investigate these cars and the way they're being operated. So it's, it's a two-way street. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we find, that they do, they do use the small parades of shops as their hunting ground. Oh, well, that sounds good. And the councils are just kicking the small business in, in the crutch. I can see the problem that you've got down there, and I think you've got a, a, one of those arrogant councils that think that they know best, and uh, we will be bringing it to their attention, shall we say. Morning, or if you're within radio range, we are still on the road. They've got two cars. First thing is to locate the cars. They're both there. We're just around the corner from you, I believe. It's Needle and the Hastings. Where's he going? Is it like a game? Ah, uh, it's more chess. Lord Eagle, Lord Eagle, we have a car. Over. And it, right in front of us. Right on the seafront. You've just got to outwit them, that's all. When you do find it, it's a huge buzz. It's a huge buzz. You've got it. Because once you've got it, now you're going to make them do proper enforcement. Not hide from the general public and find them. You're going to be able to tell the public. Listen, you're not going to hide now. We're going to tell the public where you are. And that's what your job's supposed to be. There are strict guidelines laid down by the Secretary of State that govern how these cars must be used. They must only operate where it is difficult or impractical for a traffic warden to patrol on foot. These cars are not being used in that way. They're being deployed willy-nilly. This is statutory guidance. You, you must comply with it, and they're not. They're not. They're just sending the cars out where it's equally practical for a CEO to go. At the moment, the vast majority of councils are not listening to the public, and it seems that it's become all about the money and less about public service. It's not just mobile cameras that are catching motorists. Bus link. Um, under my hat for now. They'll go down there and pat themselves on the back, essentially. And we're going to sell this to the councils the best way that we can so that we can encourage them to uh, increase their revenue. And they'll never admit it to you, but we know exactly what Park X is about. Sorry, say again, say again. Just poke over. It's huge. The money that's involved, and when there's a lot of money at stake, then you're looking at greed. Pure and simple. It's a drug. They get they're hooked on it, and they can't see the damage that this is doing to the local economy. We want them to know that we're keeping an eye on them, definitely. When Barry took his case to the High Court, he became embroiled in a two-year legal battle. In the end, the judge ruled against him, and he lost. The risk is that you've got to pay the costs of not only your own barristers, but the barristers of the 
the defendants. Court costs mean Barry now stands to lose everything. How much do you owe because of that case? It's, uh, it's round about £43,000 now. They are trying to get me out my house by selling the house and put me out on the street. We can't pay it. If they've got to sell the house to get the money, then unfortunately that's, that's the way it's got to be. It's the, the wife who um, is very stressed out over it because of it. I built this house with my own hands, with the help of the wife. We built it with our own hands and uh, it is now at risk. So do you, do you have any regrets? No, I have no regrets, no. None at all. So losing the house doesn't worry you? Yes, it does worry me yeah, a little, yeah. 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 Because I finally. Uh, I've... That's spying. The only time you'll know you've been taken with that car is when that letter hits the doormat. And then you feel abused, don't you? If it's a traffic warden, the traffic warden gives time for the customer to come back out of the shop and move the vehicle. The camera car does not give that time. They pull up straight behind and book them. And people do just quickly think, oh, I'm just going to go to the bank. I'll quickly just draw some money out of the cash point. It's undercover. It's clandestine, isn't it? I think it's disgusting. That's just savage. That's Nazi, isn't that? It's so a way of life's at stake. Bob has run his own independent print shop for the last 15 years. I guess people around the town are pissed off. It's Big Brother. It's, it's not the right way for the council to be behaving. They're terrorising the people of the town. They're affecting people's daily lives, they're affecting local businesses, yeah? And I've stood up and just said, no, enough is enough. I made up uh, an agenda. Thank you. This is a mixture of last week's action points, and I've put some extra points in. Bob, along with other concerned members of the local community, has decided to form an action group against the use of the camera car. Right now, we need to get them to sit up and pay attention to what's being said. Because at the moment, all they're, all they're doing, they're just proving that we don't live in a democracy. The spy car, really, is the, it's the, it's, it's the straw that's broken the camel's back. It's pushed everything over the edge, and the council are getting away with too much for too long. Um, but, the, but the first thing on here's followed from last week was a group name. And I thought of two. Uh, one, Preserve South End, and the other, Welcome to South End. I rather like SOS Spy Cars. SOS Spy Cars. What, what, so have you got any, any name that you think is well, appropriate? I had um, a number, Fre the Friendlier Parking Club, or the Common Sense Parking Club, the Rational Parking Club, which perhaps is a bit uh, too past, really. If we talk about so the spy car. We don't like no. Preserve South End then to preserve our town. It's too long. It's a very really short, it's snappy, and not memorable. Uh, we need to. Right, okay, we so have we agreed on a name then? SOS Spy Cars. Right, okay. Point four Agreement was reached to develop the 1984 theme for the spy car. Action was me to develop a poster. I didn't email it to you, but I have come up with, I have enhanced the idea a little bit. It's very eye-catching. <laughs> Should it be was this the future or is this the future? Well, we're That's the whole twist. Really. So they don't end up with these tickets. It's disgraceful. What is the point of it? The point of it is purely about making money out of motorists. It's absolutely all it's about. So well done. Thank you very much. There you go. This bloke's just giving us a thumbs up. I like what these guys are doing. And they need to be all over the place. I will be there to support them, yeah? Well done, mate. Well done. And you. Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. See ya. We know the scale of the industry and the, the fact that they use the word industry is what really concerns us. I've long maintained that an industry should have a product 
And the only product of this particular industry is human misery. Faced with paying out a record-breaking £700 million in penalties to local councils, we now contest our tickets in unprecedented numbers. Motorists appeal first to the council, but if they're unsuccessful, case reference D. they can take the case to a dedicated parking tribunal. Let me introduce myself. My name's Caroline Shepherd, and I'm the adjudicator who'll deal with your case. I'm completely independent of the council and of yourself. Caroline Shepherd is the Traffic Penalty Tribunal's chief adjudicator. The Traffic Penalty Tribunal uh, covers both England and Wales. There are about 280 local authorities all around the country that are issuing parking tickets and penalty charge notices. I'm afraid it's very common in traffic. <laughs> and if you get one of those and you want to appeal against it, then you can write to the Traffic Penalty Tribunal and then the adjudicator will decide whether you have to pay or not. Tribunals take place in hundreds of towns and villages across England and Wales. Les Powell was given a ticket for parking on a single yellow line outside his bank in Cradley. I'm not one to back away if I'm in the right. Les has a disabled badge. It allows him to park on single yellow lines. He received a ticket after the traffic warden maintained his blue badge was not on display. That blue badge was in my car and it was on show. And there's no sympathy whatsoever from these wardens. And they think they are the Gestapo, Hitler's, a lot of them. They, because they've got their uniform on, they got power. Do you, how, how much was your fine, how much? 70 pounds. Well, well, I haven't paid it and I shouldn't pay it. Oh, oh. I'll go to jail for it. Do you really mean that? Oh, yeah. Really? Well, I'll go to jail because I'm innocent. And that's it. I'm innocent. The vehicle. The camera car does not give that time. They pull up straight behind and book them. And people do just quickly think, oh, I'm just going to go to the bank. I'll quickly just draw some money out of the cash point. It's undercover, it's clandestine, isn't it? I think it's disgusting. That's just savage, that's Nazi, isn't it? It's... So why have life's at stake? Bob has run his own independent print shop for the last 15 years. I guess people around the town are pissed off. It's Big Brother. It's, it's not the right way for the council to be behaving. They're terrorising the people of the town. They're affecting people's daily lives, they're affecting local businesses, yeah? And I've stood up and just said, no, enough is enough. I made up uh, an agenda. Thank you. This is a mixture of last week's action points and I've put some extra points in. Bob, along with other concerned members of the local community, has decided to form an action group against the use of the camera car. Right now, we need to get them to sit up and pay attention to what's being said. Because at the moment, all they're, all they're doing, they're just proving that we don't live in a democracy. The spy car, really, is the, it's the, it's, it's the straw that's broken the camel's back. It's pushed everything over the edge. And the council are getting away with too much for too long. Um, but, the, but the first thing on here, is, we followed up from last week, was a group name. And I thought of two. Uh, one, Preserve South End, and the other, Welcome to South End. I rather like SOS spy cars. SOS spy cars. What? What? So have you we, got any any name that you think is well, appropriate? I had um, a number: Fre the Friendlier Parking Club, or the Common Sense Parking Club, the Rational Parking Club, which perhaps is a bit uh, too past, really. If we talk about so spy cars, we don't like no. Preserve South End then to preserve our town. Too long. It's a really it's short, uh, snappy, and not memorable. Too. We need to... Right, OK, we so have we agreed on a name then? SOS Spy Cars. Right, OK. Right, OK. Point four. Agreement was reached to develop the 1984 theme for the Spy Car. Action was made to develop a poster. I didn't email it to you, but I have come up with... I have enhanced the idea a little bit. Oh, 
very eye-catching. <laughs> Should it be was this the future or is this the future? Well, we're <laughs> that's the whole to, twist, we're isn't trying it? to change it, aren't we? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, George Orwell said in the 40s that 1984 was the future. Actually, it's about 30 years later than he predicted, so therefore it's yeah. 19, was it the future? Yeah. No, I'm not nitpicking, don't get me wrong, but is Big Brother what... That's fine. It isn't clear enough, is it? It's not big enough, it's... It's not good enough, is it? No. Uh. See, another one. Didn't see the sign. I want Medway Council to come down here and stand with me for a little while. Just come and talk to us. That's all we want. We just want you to talk to us. The man responsible for the cameras in the bus lane is Andy McGrath. The council's position is that we would love it if we never issued another ticket in that area because that would mean nobody was driving through the bus station and that would be our preferred option. And we're, we're still issuing, a, I guess, a, a significantly higher number of tickets than I would have expected. But having said that, I've visited the site many times my, myself and it, it's got 13 statutory signs explaining that you can't drive a car through there. Medway Council at the moment are burying their heads in the sand. They're saying, no, we've got the right signs. Well, yes, you have got the right signs. Problem is, people aren't seeing them. That's not fair. Thank you, very welcome. Thank you. Cheers, bye. -bye. Stop! Stop! Quid, mate. It's cost you 60 quid. Some people don't want to get help. Oh well. Win some, and then the council wins some more. It's a pot of honey for the for the council, for the enforcement authority. Hello, mate. I just want to warn you, if you go left or right ahead, you're going to get a £60 fine. Did you see this orange? Uh, no, I didn't. No, I know you didn't. <laughs> well, they've got 60 quid the council aren't going to get. Yeah. In seven and a half hours, the No 2 mob managed to stop 166 motorists from using the bus lane, saving them £10,000 worth of fines. You're absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. You really, really are. You deserve you know every good thing that comes your way because you're you know for the people as it were you know absolutely. I think you're absolutely spectacular you really really really, really really are Parkex is Europe's largest parking trade show each year Companies come here to sell the latest technology and parking enforcement to local councils. Yes. Yes. A lot of people will question, why did I risk my health um, to go to the high court? But uh, you don't think that it's, uh, it's going to be at risk when you do it. Otherwise you wouldn't do it. I thought for one minute that the, I was going to lose, he wouldn't have gone anywhere near the High Court. But anyone who goes to the High Court always think they're going to win. Today, Richard is taking his case to the High Court. They're not fit. They're not fit to um, you know, be allowed to run parking. I want to put them in their place. I'm going to put them in their place, and when a High Court judge has told them, don't do this, don't do that, then they've been told. He hopes the evidence he's gathered will be enough to convince the judge that his council are illegally using parking to raise revenue. Making these bundles up has cost a packet. Do you worry about that, the expense that you've gone to? And, and no, rest? no, because eventually... I'll take this to court, I'll prove Camden Council are up to an awful lot of no good and then they'll stop issuing all the tickets they do and etc cetera, etc cetera. and then um, I won't have to spend endless hours every week writing letters to tickets that should never have been issued in the first place. Is there risk involved going to the High Court? Oh yeah, 
yeah, probably a hundred grand, two hundred grand bill if it all goes wrong, something like that. Are you confident? Yeah. Yeah, I'm well confident. If I lose this, it's Ben. The battle lines between motorist and council have been drawn, and the fight looks set to continue. There needs to be trust between the citizens in their cars and the authorities. At present, it doesn't always appear that that trust exists on either side. When it stops is when the, when the council sees sense and realise that um, they can't use motorists as cash cows. They cannot use it for revenue-driven enforcement. It's against the law, it's as simple as that. Since last year, the number of tickets issued for driving in them has shot up to over half a million. Brighton and Hove City Council use cameras to monitor their bus lanes. The aim is to keep them free of traffic in a city that wants to promote the use of public transport. Andy Capey was caught and given a £60 penalty. There's some little guy in his office up there with the camera and so, oh, there's one! And start controlling the CCTV, you know, with these joysticks, I guess he has. So yeah, it's down to one individual up there, you know, by chance, seeing me in, in the wrong place at the wrong time. Get him, gotta get him. Today is Andy's tribunal hearing. His defence is that the sign warning him not to turn into the bus lane was not visible at the time. You'll see on my photograph it is not in this position. In fact, this was kind of like at that angle. And you'll see it. I mean, I've got it on my phone. There we go. One full colour, glossy finish photograph. <coughs> the evidence that will result in me getting the, uh, the penalty counsel. Fingers crossed. What I object to is um, you are considered to be guilty until proven innocent. Well, I think most people will get the letter saying you are fined 30 pounds. We've got evidence that you've gone into this bus lane. If you don't pay within two weeks or appeal, then it goes up to 60. They'll go, I'll pay the 30 pounds. And, and, uh, and that's what the, the schemes encourage. They encourage people to admit to something, even if they're not in the wrong, um, because they, they have the threat of the fine doubling within quite a short space of time. Present, we have Mr. Andy Cappy. Uh, the, from Brighton Hove City Council, we have Mr. Ian Worrell. Uh, would you like to then tell me wh what, what challenge you make to this? OK, well, the one photograph that I want, that I've printed off, so you get a much better view, is this yes. one. And basically, in that photograph, it shows this no right-hand turn sign. You, um, you make the point clearly. Mm. Mr. Worrell, how do you respond to, to that? That does rather challenge the council's evidence of adequate signage on this particular occasion. Yeah. I accept, actually, that from the photographs that you've sent in, that the no right turn sign isn't, isn't the correct way, correct way round. Uh, so, yeah, I, I totally accept what you're saying there. And, right. Um, than I would have expected but having said that I've visited the site many times my, myself and it, it's got 13 statutory signs explaining that you can't drive a car through there. Medway Council at the moment are burying their heads in the sand. They're saying no we've got the right signs. Well, yes you have got the right signs. Problem is people aren't seeing them. That's not fair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Stop! Stop! Sixty quid, mate! It's cost you sixty quid! Some people don't want to get help. Oh well. Win some, and then the council wins some more. Pot of honey for the for the council for the enforcement authority. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hello, mate. I just want to warn you: if you go left or right ahead, you're going to get a sixty pound fine. Did you see this orange? Uh, no, I didn't. No, I know you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Sixty quid the council aren't going to get. Yeah. In seven and a half hours, the No Two mob managed to stop 166 motorists from using the bus lane saving them £10,000 worth of fines. You're absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. You really, really are. You deserve, you know, every good thing that comes your way because you're, you know, for the people, as it were, you know. Absolutely. I think you're absolutely spectacular. You Thank really, you really, really are. Parkex is Europe's largest parking trade show. Each year, companies come here to sell the latest technology and parking enforcement to local councils. And we're very pleased to bring to market our latest offering, which is the product of two years of R&D. So this year we're very pleased to come to Parkex and launch this product. It's a lucrative industry, worth over £1 billion. Okay, this is an example of perhaps one of the more modern kinds of parking machines. I grant you it doesn't look terribly modern, but it, it looks pretty familiar to us all. The No Two mob intend to visit the show to gather fresh intelligence on the latest technology. We can be clandestine if we need to be, and um, we fully expect to get thrown out because we will be unveiling a little present for them, but uh, I'll keep that one um, under my hat for now.